welcome to episode three of Slice TV. I'm here with Jim Vandermeer from Peridus Group. Now, Jim, I want to talk to you today about the new job you have down south on the Mandra line, lifting a new train station into place within 36 hours? Uh, that's right. We, um, because the freeway is such a busy road and we also have a live railway line, um, using conventional methods uh, were unacceptable to the client, which is the Perth Transit Authority. We devised a method whereby we would build the railway station in a series of modules. They will be built in a factory in uh, Perth. They will then, then be transported to the site and, and assembled on the side of the freeway out of the road of the cars. And then we've got uh, 30 hours to lift those uh, modules into position. So Jim, a 30 hour lift to set up a train station. Now I'm not an engineer, but that sounds tricky. Firstly, you're gonna be doing it in winter. So safety, what are the, some of the factors? Yes, well, we've taken all those considerations into account. We've certainly looked at, um, at the wind, the possibility of, of, of having high winds. Uh, we, have, we will be setting limits on, on lifting so that if there's a storm coming through, we may have to delay until the wind abates. But we certainly can lift in, in, in certainly in a very strong sea breeze type wind. Um, but there's no other option. We've done uh, numerous numbers on this and, and safety checks and we're more than happy with the, with the results. Give us a little bit of background about Peridus Group. Okay, Peridus Group was a, um, a, a number of young engineers that used to work for me at a, in a previous uh, life, in a previous company. Um, when, I, when I saw them, I, I liked them very much. I believed that they had exceptional uh, talent, exceptional uh, skills. Uh, also, um, we, we worked well together. We complemented each other. That, um, uh, my experience and their youth and, and, and exuberance and, and energy was, was uh, if you like, the, the start of the Peritus Group. So they were looking for a new challenge in life, so I challenged them to, to start their own company. And they took the challenge and it's now a very successful consulting company with uh, a, a track record that's about seven years old now. So now you've been involved in a lot of other lifts before, so give us a little bit about the history and why uh, your, the contractor chose Peridus Group to tackle this, this lift in such an incredible time period? Well, um, heavy lifting is a, is a particular art, if you like. It's a particular skill that I have. I've, d I've developed it over the years by being involved in a, a number of significant projects throughout Western Australia. So um, one of the most recent ones was the Cape Preston um, Pacific Pacific project, which was a large magnetite iron ore mine where we had to lift uh, 12 fully assembled mills that were, that were assembled in China and brought out by a very large heavy lift ship and they weighed up to 1400 tonnes each and they had to be lifted uh, off, the, off the transporter and onto the bearings of the, of the, of the mill foundations and that went very, very well. Um, there's, a, there's only one way to approach heavy lifting, that's to do it carefully, be aware of the, of the equipment that's available uh, and um, and do your homework. Okay, with your background with the Cape Preston job, this job is such an a interesting job to get a, a train station lifted into position with 36 hours. How do you get a team ready for that? What are some of the things that you guys have now had to develop or put in place, particularly for this job? Okay, it's very important that you work very closely with the client so that they, their expectations are well and truly identified and understood. Um, you then uh, look at the equipment available um, and you, you I mean it, it takes a lot of innovation to do this sort of work. Um, I think we're good at that. We're good at innovating and understanding uh, uh, what the best methods are and this comes th through experience. I mean uh, we've been doing this, I've been doing this sort of work for over 30 years so um, we're certainly not reinventing the wheel but we see it now adapting a lot of our previous uh, successful methods that we've used on previous projects and convert them into a, into a very successful lift project here. So we're very confident that we've actually uh, solved the problem uh, and um, we are now in the, in the stage of producing all the lifting equipment and uh, we're well and truly on track to have it ready for lifting, uh, I think it's in August this year. A job like this where you've got a little amount of time and a lot of people on site, how do you manage the people? Well that's uh, a very important question, um, a very important part of the project is that everybody that's involved in the project has a, a, a defined role to play. 
it's very much like a, uh, an orchestra. The, the orchestra is, is full of people that can play instruments very, very well, but they need to be conducted by someone who tells them when to play what. And it's the same with a lifting pr uh, project. The, there'll be one person, a lift, um, lift master involved. He will, he will have the defined roles uh, for all, ev all players and um, everybody refers to him uh, during the lifting process and he conducts, if you like, the lift just like a conductor conducts an orchestra. It's exactly the same. It's that, 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 those lines of authority that are most important uh, in, in view of safety management to keep an eye on safety, uh, to make sure that all the constraints that we put in place are complied with. Uh, we will also be part of that orchestra. We will also be there, uh, uh, if you like, assisting the conductor if required. So if he has any queries or if he has any doubts or if he has any, any concerns, we can allay those concerns on the spot. So it'll, for us, it'll be uh, quite an important role as well. So a conductor is a very important person and in that comparison with an orchestra, you try to find the best conductor in the world. How do you go about getting someone to do this job or do you look very far or is it in Perth? They are in Perth, but they are generally people with a lot of experience so that they are uh, they're a supervisor style of person with, with a lot of crane experience, a lot of lifting experience, and a lot of man management experience, people who can manage teams. So, uh, it, and that conductor will also need some assistance from us in terms of explaining to him how we have, have designed this lift so that he understands the lift. And with that understanding, he can then proceed to conduct that, that lift uh, operation. So what's gonna happen with the actual train line and the work, uh, is the train line still live while you're doing this lift? No, while we're doing the lift, the train line won't be alive and the freeway will also be shut off for 30 hours. So there, there's, a, there's a management plan in place or a traffic management place uh, plan in place where the, the traffic will be um, detoured around this site for 30 hours. Uh, but in that time, we have to prepare the, the, the lift pad, we have to do the lift and then uh, remove the lift pad and get the freeway back in operation in within 30 hours. So it's quite a tight time frame. Now, did this mean a lot of um, talk and conversation with government bodies to get the planning and infrastructure sorted out beforehand now? or Yes, there's certainly a lot of, if you like, a lot of selling required. You've got to, um, we still have to present the final plan to the to the government, but uh, up to date, they've they've seen the, uh, the concepts and they've, they've quite... Uh, quite happy with the concept so far, but we've still got a little way to go with, um, with convincing them that, uh, and just demonstrating to them that we've covered all the aspects of safety and, um, uh, safety and, and management of the lift itself. So we, we can't afford not to have it in place in 30 hours because uh, the disruption to the freeway and the train system would be unacceptable. Now this is a very niche job, I would think. Uh, is this a, an angle that Peritus Group is going? Yes, very much so. Uh, we also are very much involved with a company called Austal Ships in, in Henderson, where we are involved with the, the launching of, of the large vessels that they produce down at that facility. Um, we designed the slipway for them many years ago. We, we are still involved in, in due, due diligence on the slipway, on corrosion management, and uh, advising them on, on uh, slipping procedures for the vessel. So, it's very much part of, of the of the Peritus credo, if you like, that we we uh, we are uh, very experienced in doing temp it's called temporary works designs and uh, and heavy lifting. So it's a, it's a unique uh, place to be. I think just uh, through reputation, we're getting uh, quite a few opportunities to to use that skill. And our Austral ship of uh, going fantastic in America with the. Navy contracts being one, I think, the only country outside of America that's ever won Navy contracts. Mm. They're a very unique WA Perth company. Is it a very Peritus group working with them? As a, um, do you sort of see yourself in that sort of thinking outside the box mentality? We do. Um, we've been working with Austral Ships since they started, so that was in the 1980s. So we know that the original directors very, very well. In fact, they're personal friends. Uh, so we have been on the journey with Austral for, for how many years now? Uh, almost 25 years. So all their facilities were designed by us. Uh, we have enjoyed a great relationship. Uh, yes, we do think outside the box like they do, and I think it's vital that, that engineering delivers those sort of uh, solutions. Um, I think Mal Malcolm Turnbull has uh, stated it quite clearly. This is an age of innovation now that we're going into, and I think we belong there, and I think we... We excel in that sort of environment. 
So how is innovation used in Peritus Group? What is it that makes you guys different? Well, we're always using the latest techniques in terms of um, analysing and designing. We use the latest software. Uh, we have a good mix of, of experience and, and uh, new young uh, engineers. Uh, we're very much into training our engineers. We have regular training sessions. We're building a culture of don't be afraid, uh, you know, try something new. That's the culture in here. Uh, don't do it the same way. Is there a better way? And I think that's, that culture must survive. And I would strongly encourage that culture, uh, if, if that was adopted by Australian businesses, they would be in a lot better place. How does that culture work? Just give us a bit of a day-to-day -day example of, or a job example of how that works. Well, it's, it, it, for example, it comes down to designing a hinge for a large gate, for example. Conventionally, people would go to Bunnings and buy a, a large, heavy industrial hinge. Well, we don't do it that way. We look at the hinging process and we, we, we designed a, a large gate, which was about uh, eight metres wide, uh, a normal hinge would have struggled. We designed this new hinge and it's absolutely working a treat. So it's, 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 it goes to little things like hinges up to very large things like, well, how, how do we construct this building? You know, so we're currently uh, designing a building in Mount Pleasant where we, we're actually building the basement while we're building the superstructure. So they're both going on at the same time. It, it's called a top-down construction. We were part of the innovation for that. Uh, and it's worked very well. It saved the builder many, many months of construction time. So he's now delivering to his clients uh, apartments uh, many months ahead of a normal uh, program. Now, Jim, you talk very passionate about engineering. Is it something that, reason why you get up in the morning and want to, to go to work? Is it, is it something that's in your blood? Do you, do, you, do you live and breathe it? I think you do. I mean, every, every profession has, has problems. Every profession has... has um, situations where, um, where times are difficult. Um, yes, I, I get up every morning wanting to go to work because uh, I, I'm on a constant path of discovery. Even at my age, I'm still discovering. Um, I'm still trying to enthuse the young people to, to discover, to be proud of what they do. Um, some good old fashioned advice at times goes a long way. Uh, get them to think about what they're doing. Don't just run to the computer. So I think if you mix the, the, the latest methods and the, some of the old um, concept work that we did uh, years ago before the computer, you, the, what comes out is a, is a person who's fully in control of what he's doing and who, who, can, who can map out a path forward without, uh, without um, concern. I like it how you're just talking about a bit of old and new. Even just sitting here, we're in a warehouse that you guys have constructed or worked on to turn into your office space. Here you've got old brickwork here behind me here with new new construction around it. Is, it. is that part of your theme? I think I've been in previous parts of your workplaces and I've seen that type of theme, warehouse with modern modern facilities. Is that is that part of Peritus? Is yeah. that part of the Jim Vandermeer thinking? I think it's very much part of my thinking uh, and, and Peritas. I think that we do enjoy creating a, a workplace which is slightly different. You see it very much in the cafe scene, like the Queen's Hotel. Uh, which we, we were involved in many, many years ago. We, we, we saw that architect brought out the, instead of knocking down the old, he, he worked with the old and turned it into something really interesting. Well, I've always liked that model. So we found this old foundry here. It had a homeless man in it. So we kept the homeless man as long as we could and we just converted it into an office. And it's, it's given the, uh, all the people that work here um, a wonderful environment. It's really about us. You, you're dead right. I mean, why throw out the old? You, you don't need to. The same with, 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 with uh, engineers. I mean, you know, just because I'm past 65 doesn't mean I have to retire. It doesn't mean I can't be useful. To preserve this environment, you must train the young people coming through. You must convince them this is the way forward. And even when I stop working, they're going to have that hunger and not have the fear of, of inventing and discovering. And, and, and not be afraid to look, uh, look outside the box, think outside the box and, 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 and don't do it alone, do it with everybody around you. Bring them along, part of the journey, including the clients. Give the clients some ownership of the ideas and they come along willingly. I like that way of thinking. Even past 65, there's been a lot of talk in the news about um, including older workforce in the workforce. Is that a mentality in Peritus Group as well? Absolutely. I've seen it, uh, all over the world. I've seen it um, where you have uh, at Denver Airport, for example, you have uh, retired people who uh, act in a voluntary um, 
uh, manner, and they actually act as guides for all the, all the tourists that arrive. How often do you come to an airport, you don't know where to go, all you do at Denver, you look for a bloke with a big hat on, and you walk up to him, he's very pleasant, he, he, he introduces himself, he's well and truly into his 70s, and he loves his job, and he makes your, your, your entrance into Denver so much more pleasant. Same with, with, with Peritus. I believe that, that my usefulness is, is training these people, passing some of that experience, which is not in books, it's, mm. it's living experience, onto these young people, and then helping them discover for themselves, and then rewarding them with, with accolades if they, if they show that, that, that will to, 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 to innovate. Innovation, innovation. Malcolm Turnbull, you are dead right. We need to innovate. And then Australia will become a totally different economy. We won't be followers, we'll be leaders. You've seen it with Silicon Valley, you've seen it with lots of places in the world where innovation leads to um, uh, a totally new type of economy. Absolutely, and that's what we're going to need, otherwise we'll be in this boom-bust economy for a long, long time. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Jim, fantastic talking with you. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. I look forward to what Peritus can do in the future, and good luck with the lift. Till next time, we'll speak soon. Bye for now. <laughs>